Good morning, student. Today's topic will be ethical issue in genetic screening. What is genetic screening? Genetic screening is actually a process to examine the genetic code of a person. All of us have millions of genetic codes in our body, right? And to most of us, the genetic codes may differ by a little bit because each of the genes will actually determine whether we have a certain disease in the future or whether we have brown hair or black hair or blue eyes or black eyes and so on. So genetic screening can be useful to find out whether a person has certain gene that predisposes him to a certain illness in the future. For example, let's talk about breast cancer. There is a certain gene called BRCA2 that if a person has it, will have a higher risk of breast cancer compared to those persons who don't have it. So a lady may want to test for this gene to see whether she has a risk of breast cancer in the future. So what does this person do? She goes for this genetic test, all right? And let's say if the genetic test shows that she has this gene for breast cancer, and you look at the previous statistics, it means that her risk of getting breast cancer is higher than other women because she has this gene. It doesn't mean that she will 100% get breast, get breast cancer because there are also other components of cancer development that is not genetically related. Right, like environmental cause and so on. But certainly in this case, if she has a gene, her risk is actually higher. So what is the aim of genetic screening? The aim of it is to find out whether a person has a risk of certain disease before he actually has the disease itself. Right? And the advantage of it, if it does it properly, is if you know, like for example, you know this person has a risk of developing breast cancer, she may undergo more regular screening like mammogram to have early detection of the cancer. And you know that cancer, if it's detected early, can be cured you know, through surgery and so on. So if a person knows that this, he has higher risk of this particular disease through genetic screening, he would actually go for more regular monitoring so that he can pick up the disease early. But having said that, there are also disadvantages of genetic screening. Some of the diseases, even you found them up early, there is no cure. So in that case, it will actually be bad because why do you want to know about a disease? You are going to have this particular disease in the future when you know that you cannot do anything about that. Sometimes having this knowledge that you are predisposed to a certain disease can also be bad because it will affect our future life because, for example, if you purchase an insurance policy, if an insurance company knows that you have a risk of let's say, breast cancer in the future, they may not want to insure you. Similarly, if you go and apply for a job and your boss knows that you are predisposed to certain illnesses in the future, he may think that you are not going to be healthy and he is not going to employ you. And similarly, when it comes to selecting a spouse, your partner may not want you because you have a risk of certain disease. Well, that's the same about insurance company because if they think that you have risk of certain disease, they will not take you up. So what are some of the issues in genetic testing and insurance policy? All right. Like what we mentioned earlier before, what if you know the insurance company found out that you have tested for a certain gene and then you are at risk of having this particular disease in the future? Do you think the insurance policy company would actually want to take you in at in a company policy? And if they decide to take you in, do you think that they should charge you higher premium because your risk is higher? In that case, then you ask yourself, is it fair in this aspect because you have not developed the disease yet? So you should be counted that as any other general population who didn't know that they have a risk of this disease, you know, until the disease developed. Why should you be penalized? with a higher insurance premium just because you got for this testing to show that you have this particular gene for the disease itself. Now, other issues will be, let's say you go for the screening before that and you found that you have this gene and you know that you got apply insurance policy after that. And you know at the moment that you don't have the disease, you have the gene but you don't have the disease. Is it right then to hide this information from the insurance company? You know, you may argue that okay, I do not have this disease now. So what if I have the gene? You know, I, will not just I won't declare in the insurance form because they would know. But let's say if one day the insurance company found out that you do really know of this particular gene before that and you declare that you didn't know, 
they may actually void your insurance policy. So if you look at that, sometimes you know it may be better not to test for any of these gene if you want to buy insurance policy. You know, then you are the same as everybody else who doesn't know whether they have this risk of this disease. You may want to buy the policy first, then after that you will test for the gene later on. Now that's another issue is what about insurance company itself? Can they force you to take a test, you know, to find out whether you have certain gene that high risk so that they can actually charge you higher? Or similarly employers, you know, the employer say, okay, I will want to take you in as my employee, but you must go for this screening to make sure you don't have this gene for this certain disease. Is this fair to you? Because the disease have not developed yet. So what if you have this gene? Does it mean that you'll be penalized and you will not be employed by the boss or you'll not be taken up by the insurance company? Genetic discrimination is actually a serious issue because a person can be discriminated based on his gene. Right? Just like there are discrimination against age. Some people don't like older worker. Some people don't like a certain race. You know, Some people don't like a certain sex. You know, Some employer feels that employing ladies may be more difficult than men because ladies may take maternity leave. Right? And some employers may even discriminate against religion. They feel that you know, if you belong to this religious group, you may not be appropriate to work in this particular job. You know, so genetic discrimination may also be another form of discrimination in the form that if you have a certain disease, predispose a certain disease, your boss may not want you. Alright, so this can be a big issue if you go for genetic screening. Well, other scenarios of genetic discrimination we have mentioned about at workplace. You know, the boss may not employ you in school. If let's say you have a gene of a low intelligence, the school may not want to take you in because you affect the overall school result. Similarly, finding a life partner, your spouse may not want to marry you if they think that she thinks that you have a risk of certain disease that develop early and you may die earlier. And similarly, like what I say, insurance company. Now, the thing about genetic screening is Although you may have the gene of a certain disease, it doesn't mean that you are 100% getting the disease. Because sometimes, you know, the disease may also have other components like environmental costs. So you need a combination of the gene and also the environmental exposure that trigger off the illness. Alright? Let's look at this, a few things that you should think of, alright, for discussion. Let's say if your employer finds out that you have a gene for a risk of heart disease, do you think he has a right to sack you? Similarly, you know, if you're in love with a spouse, you know, a potential spouse and you plan to get married, and then she finds out that you have a certain genetic disease that may cause problem in your offspring. That means that if she marries you and you have a child, the child may have a certain problem because of the gene. Do you think she has a right to reject you and not marry you? Similarly, if a school, you know, accepted you and then do a test and find that you are actually have a gene of a low IQ, do you think the school have the right to, to sack you away? So these are some of the issues or controversies in the ethics of genetic screening that we do not have answer at the moment. Right. Another discussion issue is, should testing be done for only susceptible genes? Or, like what I say, what about other genes, you know, that may predispose to a certain disease, but there's also environmental component there, all right? Other issues is should parents have the right to have their minor children tested for adult onset diseases, you know? As a father, do you think it's right for you to test your children? Because the children may not want to be tested themselves, all right? And also the other thing is the test itself, is it reliable? Some of these tests may not be reliable. You may find yourself positive a certain illness, of certain gene or certain illness, but it may not be right because the test is wrong. So then are you actually causing yourself unnecessary worry when you're actually getting a wrong result? So these are some things that you should think about it. Thank you.